What's up guys, it's Gooden52 and welcome back to another deck review. What's up guys, it's Gooden52 and welcome back to another video. Make sure you stick around for the end of the video where I'll be teaching you three beginner card controls that are going to make your life so much easier as a magician. Anyway guys, let's get into the review. Hey, I don't get what this is about. You got my head spinning on my shoulders. I feel a burn inside of my chest. See the lines that stay blur out. I can feel it knocking me out. You bring So today we have the Daffa deck by Vanishing Ink Magic. So this is printed by the USPCC and this is the red version, so it comes in a blue and a red. As you can see, we have this kind of Paisley print and that is the theme of the deck. On the side we have that Paisley print just reiterated here and here and we have a whole load of it on the back which is very similar to the back design. On the top we have a customised seal which says Vanishing Ink Playing Cards and it's kind of like a stamped seal which is quite nice and then on the bottom we have a little bit of ad work here so we have the Vanishing Ink Magic and just got the website, where they're based, who they're manufactured by and where it is based. Now let's pop the cards open, inside it's got this lovely black contrasting colour to the red which I really like that there. Normally you get just like a blank white inside but this really sets off the red. The tuck itself feels, it's like a soft, almost like a soft touch paper, it's not matte but it does feel really nice to touch. So let's have a look at the cards. Cards come with two jokers. We've got one here, one in my pocket here, making it look like a nice little pocket square. It comes with a double backer and it also comes with a blank card, so you can do routines with that. No I'm joking. <laughs> so the pips are all standard eyes pips and court cards, as we can see, but you may have noticed going through there are slight changes. All of the um, aces are customized, all of the court cards have a customised colour on there, so it's very similar to the normal courts, but you've got the paisley print colour on there. Some of the pips have a little bit of paisley going on like this. So with these cards, we've got this lovely paisley back design here. We've got yellows, we've got blues and greens all in there, and obviously set off on this red border. Now the blue cards kind of look like this. And they're really nice as well, but I really wanted the red ones and I'm so glad they got sent to me to review today. There is one little secret with this deck and that is it is fully marked. It's a very easy to read marking system, uh, very much similar to the Red Keepers. Uh, but nonetheless, you, there's no counting involved, there's no looking at hidden symbols. It's very quite easy um, and that's quite nice actually, it's quite nice for when you are using a marked deck if you do need to use it. Now, what I will add is uh, occasionally I'll be doing magic for people and they go, 
they look at the cards because obviously these are expert cards they're different to what they're used to seeing and they do study the back now if your spectator is a person like that they will notice the marking system on the back it's quite easy to find if you are looking for it however that being said it's worth using a marking system when starting out in magic because if you mess up you know what their card is and if you lose it you can go into finding it and do a, a reappearing act with the card. I have to say, when I open this, these up, I didn't know what to think because I haven't um, had any of the sort of decks from Vanishing Magic before. However, I was very pleasantly surprised by these. They fan well, they dribble incredibly well. And I was surprised, so I haven't actually broken these in yet. They're still a new deck order. I just got them out, had a look, maybe did a couple of springs. This is what it's like springing straight out the deck. I do it the opposite way as well. It feels like it's already broken in. It's very, very similar to when you, uh, if you have ever had the Keeper's deck, very similar to that. So when you get them out the box, they almost feel like they've already been broken in for you and you can use them straight away. And these definitely feel very similar to that. And I might say that these might be potentially my new favorite parts. Okay guys, because I also forgot to say at the beginning, so if you do like the cards used today, make sure that you check out the 52 Wonders web store, which will probably be in the description down here somewhere. If you do follow 52 Wonders on Instagram, you can go to the link in their Instagram and that will have the website there, or you can just search 52 Wonders online and you can pick up some cards and they ship worldwide, internationally. Let's get into the review. Before aesthetics, I absolutely dig the Paisley, and as you can see, I've actually used a playing card as a pocket square right here. It sets off against the suit, it looks great. It is the other Joker. The only issue I do have with this is I almost feel like the Jokers is slightly a little bit lazy. We've gone into, you know, fully designing massive pips here for the um, aces, and this pattern is really nice on the back. However, you come to the Jokers, and it is just too uh, sort of like Paisley little bits here like almost like feathers so for aesthetics I'm gonna give it a 9 out of 13 I think a little bit more work on the uh, the jokers would have pushed it up definitely in terms of handling so like I said at the beginning of the video these handled so well out of the box which to me shows that they're gonna handle even better as time goes on and they're fully broken in and honestly they just feel incredible so I'm gonna give these a 10 out of 13 and well done USPCC for not making a rigid deck cards as soon as they come out of the pack. Now for durability, like I said, with USPCC, they do have longevity, but personally, I don't think that USPCC lasts as long as Cartoon the B9. I'm gonna give these a nine out of 13 for that reason alone. And for practicality, the marking system is brilliant. The tuck box doesn't get too stuck when you open it. Sometimes you have an issue where it gets stuck, but that's really nice. The actual pattern themselves, do they're not too distracting they look really good and i like the idea that there are little paisley print or things missing here you can almost do it'd be really good to do like a red hot mama with two of these um and instead of having a signature on there having that paisley print as like the convincer it's quite a nice idea um so i'm going to give these a 10 out of 13. that means that i'm going to give this deck a 38 out of 52. now guys let's get into teaching you those three easy beginner card control moves. Sorry, what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna first learn how to do a double undercut, which looks like this. So we take a card, we put it in somewhere, and I push that in, and then we do a couple of cards here, a couple of cards there, and the card should now be on the top. Now this works going both ways, so we can go up and down with that. So likewise, we can put the card in here, and if I pull up, we can do a cut, and it is now on the bottom of the deck. So we do this like this. So as we put the card in, if we want it to take it to the top of the deck, we're going to push down like that as we push it in. And then we're going to take some of the cards and move it to the top. And then where that thumb break is here, we're going to take the rest of the cards to the top like that. And now that card should be on the top. So I'll just do it one more time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the card, I'm going to push it in. Now as I'm pushing the card in and squaring it up, I'm going to push down. So I get this break. Now this is over exaggerated for the purpose of the tutorial. With my little finger, I'm gonna pull off here and take a packet to the top. And I'm gonna take the rest of the cards to the top like that. And now, your card should be on the top. Now the reason we need to learn the double undercut first is because when we do a fan control or a dribble control, it basically uses the double undercut um, as the control at the end. But the reason that we use the fan and the dribble on top of just doing a double undercut is because if we think about the spectator, 
So if I was to just take their card, which is the two diamonds, and I was to place it in there, say, right, I'm going to lose it, and cut the cards like this, it almost seems that I've done something there. And there's a preconceived notion that I've done something with the cards to get it into a position where I want it. So when we do a fan control, what we do is, as we fan out the cards in a fun fan, we put their card selection in, and I'm going to do it face up so we can see it, and we ask them to push it in as much as they can. And when we square up this, and we pull it back round, their card should just out jog a little bit here. So we've got their card in, and as we close it up, we've got a little out jog. Now this is a bit of an exaggeration, but this allows you to almost hand off the cards into each hand and keep it real casual. As we square it up, we can just do a quick cut like this, say right, okay. So we know their card selection's on the bottom, we could do a couple of shuffles and retain the card that way. But we could do anything with the card at this point because we know exactly where it is. And it doesn't seem too uh, much like that we've done something different. So now we're going to do, I'm just going to show you the dribble version. And this works like this. So you ask them to tell them to stop. And so they stop here. So this is their card. Now I'm going to leave it face up so we can see this. When I come to dribble on top, what I'm going to do is I'm going to angle my hand down a little bit and then I'm going to allow that dribble to come down. Now this is a massive exaggeration, but I'll show you why. And what you want to do is then grip that from where you've dribbled and push in. So you've now got a break, like a thumb break, where their card is, which is there, you can see it peeking out. And from there, you can do a double undercut and the card is now on top. So do that one more time with the dribble and do it from different angles so you can see. So I'm going to dribble down the cards and say stop. This is their card right here. And I'm going to dribble down the cards on top and then close it up. So I'll do a little pass there so you can see. And that is their card on top. So one last time, so what we do is tell them to stop. There we go, there's your card. We just dribble the rest of the cards on top. Push that in and we'll do a cut just to lose some of them. And then what I'll do is I'll potentially go, okay, is this your card? No, it's not your card. And I'll just give it a little shake and their card is now on the top. So the reason why we do these different fans and we do these different cuts and dribbles and stuff, although it is pure deception, is about making the spectator believe it and we've got to think about how it appears to them. So like I said, when we do a fan or when we do a dribble, it almost seems a little bit more conceivable that we have, in fact, lost their card in the deck when, in fact, we know where it is the whole time. If we were just to simply take the card off them and we put it in, we push it in and we get a thumb break and we cut the cards like this. Too much has happened where it seems really, really dodgy. So there we have it. That is the tutorial for the double undercut, the fan and the dribble variation. Now, what it is to remember is that to practice these moves over and over again before you go out and perform them, look in the mirror, just think about how it looks when you are actually performing these things for a spectator. So for example, like I said in the in the tutorial, just taking the card off them and putting it in yourself and cutting that to the top already, in their mind looks like you've done something because you've handled the card, you've placed it where you want it, and you've done this sort of move straight afterwards. Whereas when you fan, pop the card in, and then control it to the top, it almost seems you've like misdirected their time. They've forgotten that you've touched it and put it anywhere. They could have put it, put it in themselves. So anyway guys, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you comment down below, and you head across to the 50 Wonders if there's any cards that you would like to purchase from our web stores. Anyway guys, hope you've enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!